tires. Now, there are two types of people in this world. There are those who are really into their tires, compounds, pressures, tread patterns, belt technology, you name it. They're, they're, they're clued up on it and they want to know about it on every latest tire. And then there's people like my dad who their criteria, I'd say black and round, but I don't even think they're fussy about that. They'll ride any bike on any tire and not really give a damn what they do. Which makes it quite hard for a tire company when they're launching a tire to get across their, their benefits, their improvements compared to the old model. We're here in Jerez in Spain, or Jerez as the late Nicky Hayden used to call it, to test the new Bridgestone Battleax Hypersport S22. And then to make us feel like kings, they threw us in a helicopter to get us from the hotel this morning. Bridgestone couldn't afford a coach, so they've had to uh, helicopter us <laughs> into the track this morning. And, uh, I'm gonna go be a rock star. This tire is to replace the old S21, although they are going to sell those alongside. And it's not their full-on track tire. It sits below the RS10 track tire. It's their, their road sports tire. Now, the improvements Bridgestone wanted to make here were the improvements that actually matter for most of us when we're riding on the road. Better cold performance. So that moment when you ride out the garage, get to the first turn out of your town, you're tipping into that first nice corner. That's where they're looking for the improvement. They're looking for the tire to warm up quicker, but feel better and grip better when the tire surface is cold. The next improvement they were looking for was to increase wet weather performance. For us in the UK, that couldn't be better. But for anywhere in the world where you do get rain, knowing that if you're out on a ride and you get a downpour, knowing you've got a tyre that's predictable, easy to ride and grips well, means you can enjoy the rest of the ride rather than tiptoeing home, praying nothing bad goes wrong. Unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity to test the wet weather performance because we're in Spain, it's sunny. But the cold weather performance, we got a little run out this morning on the tires that hadn't been used yet. And the cold performance, again, seems really, really good. I'm being super vague here. The problem is we haven't got eight different tires to test in the same conditions. We've got one set of tires on one track. All we can comment on is, yes, they work well. No, they work badly. Thankfully, they work well. Straight out the gate, I was comfortable on the S22. And I got to admit, Bridgestones historically haven't been my favorite tires, but the S22 felt good from the first apex when the tires were a little bit cold, there was plenty of feel, it never felt like it was gonna slide away or do anything untoward. The impressive thing with the S22 is that when you sling it on a ZX10 or an S1000RR, a superbike, and put it on a racetrack and thrash the life out of it around a racetrack, an environment this tire is not really designed for, it still works well. The difference between it and a super sports race tire or an RS10 or even a slick is that on the edge of the tire you are being a little bit more ginger with the throttle and you're not burying the brake deep into the turn. But unless you're worrying about lap times, there's nothing to stop your enjoyment of riding on track. Best of all, that same tire you can then take back to work on a Monday morning and make your road ride fun, whether it's rainy, sunny, hot or cold, there's a much more versatile tire now with this new S22. Now I've already talked a little, enough about tires and, and this is kind of the problem with, with tire companies when they're trying to launch a new tire. Without eight other tires to compare it to, there's very little to say why to buy the Bridgestone or another brand. And likewise, even when you've got those tires, there's usually two or three that are in that same, same level of performance. So it's quite hard to split the difference between them. The most important thing to know is the S22 is a good high performance road tire that gives you grip in the cold and in the wet. If you've got a set on your bike and they come as OE on many bikes, including the new ZX6, you're gonna have a great time on them. And it's only when you're chasing lap times, you're gonna to wanna to swap to something stickier. So what difference do tires really make? On one hand, that's the bit that connects you and your bike to the road. That's what gives you the feel and the confidence to ride faster. And ultimately that's the grip you're relying on when you're accelerating, braking and cornering. With that in mind, there are compound differences, there are construction differences, there's pressures you can run different, there is this whole mad world of, of tyre science. It's an art in itself, you know, MotoGP teams have tyre technicians whose job is to 
care about that stuff. In the real world, it matters a lot to some people. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, it's not gonna change your world if you change your tire pressure by one PSI. I know a lot of people, uh, track days are, are real fussy about changing tiny little things. It's more important to get out on your bike and enjoy it. And I can hear a few cynics already saying, but it does make a difference. And it does, but not as much as you're riding. You've never been truly humbled until you've been on a track riding on a super sports tire and a tire development rider from Bridgestone, Dunlop, you name it, has come round the outside of you on their sport touring tire, scraping everything on the bike, lapping three seconds a lap faster than you. And at that point you realize that actually, as long as you've got a tire that gives you good feedback and good feel, nearly always it's us attached to the handlebars that are the limiting factor. So I've already spoken about the fact that this is a road sports tire. For all you track day heroes out there, what actually matters when you're riding on track? Is it lap times or is it having fun? I've been in this trap myself. I've always thought I've got to have the latest, stickiest tires on my bike, super sport, soft compound. And then it kind of occurred to me that I go to a track to have fun on my bike. I'm not really fussed these days about trying to win races or do hot laps. And at that point, you can run a super sport tire that will last you a day, if you're on a thousand, maybe half a day, or you can run a, a, a road sport tire, a sports tire like this S22, and you'll get three track days out of it. And yes, your lap times will be slower, but the feedback's good, the feeling's the same, you still get good lean angle. It's an interesting question. Chuck a comment below, let us know what you think. Would you, would you happily take less grip for three more track days worth of life? Or is, is lap times and grip the be all and end all? All done, finished, time for a beer. But before we can have a beer, we're gonna helicopter ride home. Because <laughs> clearly Bridgestone have got too much money. No, it's been a fantastic day's riding. Really impressed with the S22, particularly how well they held out. They've had a full day of track abuse. No brakes for the bikes. The bikes have been on the go, non-stop the whole day. And actually, the tires have held out really, really well. It's not a track tire, but it's got that outright performance that if you want to use it on a track, you can. And it's kind of giving you the confidence to know that, yeah, there's more than enough grip there on the road. It'd be interesting to try them back in the UK when we get some lower temperatures, some cold starts in the mornings, and I really want to give them a go in the way.